the Flyers win again. They are now 15-3-2 in their last 20, and that is really remarkable. And, and I'll be honest with you, it's kind of sparking the noise of Scott Gordon. We will get to that after we talk about this game. They win 6-3 to in New Jersey. They beat up on the Devils. The Devils are not obviously a good hockey team this season, which is crazy compared to what they did last year, but they're just not good. The Flyers, it's not like they played a phenomenal hockey game. There were some physicality and some brutalness to this game that they overcame. They didn't start out tremendous, but the Flyers get the win 6-3. to Cam Talbot gets the nod, the eighth goalie this season for the Flyers. Flyers, mind-blowing. Is it really? No, but mind-blowing. Eight different net binders. I, I just can't believe it. it. It really is pretty ridiculous. So, the way this game starts out with Curtis Gabriel destroying Nolan Patrick from behind, and this wasn't a mistake. He was Nolan Patrick was literally facing the wall, facing the boards, and Gabriel came with like full speed intention to drill him with his numbers already facing Gabriel. It was terrible, horrible, just just a disgrace in hockey. And and the reason for him not getting kicked out doesn't make sense. He should have literally gotten kicked out of the hockey game and. And the fact that he stayed in there is why that there were other problems in this game. Nolan Patrick getting payback late on one hit. And then Gabriel trying to go after Scott Lawton. And then you have Nolan Patrick and Konechny in the box chirping to the other box. If the refs took control of this early when they should have and kicked him out of the game for the, for the rest of the game itself, none of this would have happened and the game would have been controlled. The refs did not do a good job of controlling this game after within the first five minutes, Gabriel literally has his eyeball set on Nolan Patrick's number and drills him. It, it really is pathetic and ruthless. That's garbage. That crap has to be out of this damn league and that's a joke out of Gabriel. That, that's old time hockey stuff that just isn't even normal in today's game whatsoever. It's a joke and I hope he gets a hearing because it really is just an absolute pathetic joke out of Gabriel to line someone up like that with his numbers facing him for a solid 20 seconds. It's stupid. It's just stupid. And it pisses me off because it's not part of the game. So when Nolan Patrick gets payback later in the game when it was late, by all means, by all means, by all means, just a joke. But the Flyers, they, they get that five-minute power play, it, it struggles, and we eventually get on the board when JVR, a North Jersey lad, scores two goals under two minutes. The first one, high slot, beautiful, how do you do? Hits the twine, someone's got the twine flu. And the second one, really great play by Ryan Hartman as he's going behind the net and he fakes it. Back to the short side post. The goalie totally, totally, totally falls for it. And JVR is wide open on that short side to bang it home 2 nothing. When you take a look at some stats for the Flyers, JVR had a three-point night. Voracek ended up having three assists. Claude Giroux had two apples. Konechny scores two goals. And he actually gets his 20th of the season, which is really impressive for, for TK. Especially if you remember early on in this season as they were just... He, he specifically was very... Snake bitten, couldn't score, hitting post, couldn't really get the puck behind the net. Now, we're up 2 nothing. I kind of got distracted by how the game kind of went. 2 nothing. we go up. And then, in the second period, Cam Talbot on two really juicy, 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 juicy rebounds. The Devils just tie it back up, bang, bang, within like a five-minute span, four-minute span. It's 2-2. Two, two. And then with 30 seconds left, TK... Konechny gets one of his goals, just a lucky, fluky-ass goal where he's skating to the net. He just, it, it just hits off a defender. I think it was Rooney of the Devils, and it goes in the back of the net. Really fluky, but sometimes the hockey gods are on your side. And going into the third period, you're now up 3-2 to two instead of tied 2-2, two -two where it's a free-for-all in the third. We end up coming back with, with three goals and Kutsi scores 27 seconds in. He cuts the middle. He shoots back far side. A goal that realistically the netminder wouldn't want to give up. But like I said, the Devils aren't good for a reason. They really are just a, a bad team. And they tried to show us a lot of grit, a lot of fight, a lot of hard work, dirty work. And the Flyers, they didn't have their greatest game. Like I said, they didn't have their greatest game. But they ended up doing what they needed to after losing Last night in Columbus, I, I didn't get a chance to put out a recap that I wanted to as they fall, the Flyers fall in overtime 4-3. to three. And even just getting to overtime, it kind of hurt because we each get a point and we got to jump teams, jump teams, jump teams, jump teams. It going to overtime and especially losing in overtime to Columbus. 
that was tough. That was tough to swallow, but we respond on the second half of a back-to-back. We win 6-3 to in a game where it showed like that this team fought for each other. That's one takeaway out of this. The team really, really fought for each other. They battled. Konechny stepping up for Nolan Patrick. Everyone's still there. The, the culture involved is there. Everyone's still fighting. Everyone believes. Everyone is just one right now with the Flyers, and tonight showed that the way that they stood up for their teammates and really went to work and really brought their lunch pal to their arena and, and battled as hard as they possibly could. So Scott Gordon has been making making some noise and people are saying listen 15 3 and 2 that's no joke that's no joke of a record right now during this big stretch and and I'm I'm in favor of going out and getting your Quenville going out and doing this but what he has proven is he can keep this team together he, he's got a strong neutral zone game he, the, the players buy into his system they believe in his system the system's working the energy's there uh, he's doing something right so whether he stays in the organization, I, I I like what he's done so far. Obviously, a big name would really help me spark it moving forward. But, you know, I'm just saying. I know for a fact that inside the organization that there are guys, Chuck Fletcher, upper management, with their eyebrows raised when it comes to Scott Gordon. I want to know down below, one, what you thought about this game. Ugly, I get it. But, you know, what would you think about the Gabriel hit? What would you think about the boys stepping up? TK, JVR having a big night. Voracek with three points. What would you think about the game? Two, what do you think about Scott Gordon? How do you think we should do moving forward with this? Should we keep our doors open and just see how it goes? And, and three, really, what do you think about the playoffs? Are you believing in this thing? When I saw our record, I really don't stare at the record itself. And it's been a while since I just like noticed it. It kind of popped out on me when I was looking at at some stat lines for today. 31, 26, and 8. I remember when we were 20, 25, and 4, horrendous, under 500. 31, 26, and 8. And when I saw that, I was a little taken back. Like, damn. Damn. And I saw some tweets on Twitter, and, and I'm getting sucked into this even though I don't want to. And when you take a look at our young core, and even guys like Philip Meyer stepping in and playing well. So, Ghost, Provrov, Myers, Haig, Konechny, uh, Couturier, Nolan Patrick, these young guys, Sanheim, they're not giving up. And people are taking that for pride. And I get that. I'm all in for the pride. I'm, I am. I am. You still have guys like Morgan Frost coming in. I'm all in for the pride and, and taking this for what it is and battling back. But I still need to look at this season, no matter if it ends up in playoffs or not, and say, we do this every year. We do this every year. So don't get sucked in too much. Because I'm starting to. I know a lot of fans are. They're getting sucked back into this. Saying, we're going to be great in the future. We're young. And this happens every single year. And I know it's different with the goaltender of Carter Hart. And that's the future. And, and I understand all that. But I, I just, I, I can't get too sucked in. I can't. I can't. I'm starting to. And I know I can't. I'm seeing it happen. And I understand I can't. Because I love the way the team's playing. I get it. This is an unbelievable 20-game stretch, and they're not giving up. And Claude Giroux is a great captain, and he's keeping this together along with Gordon. JVR's not giving up. Voracek, none of these times. No, no one, no one. There's not a guy in this locker room giving up. That's awesome. But when you put yourself in the position that we're in this year for the last four or five years, something's, something's not up. Something's not perfect. Well, no, nothing's really perfect, but something's not right is what I'm getting at. So I'm just, I'm just saying, take, take it for what it is. That's where I'm at on the Flyers right now. But yeah, listen, they, they put together another win. They grab another two points to get to the playoffs. I don't think you understand how difficult it really is going to be. But hey, we play the Islanders on a Sunday matinee. I think it's a three o'clocker, which is a really weird one. So we take on the Islanders, and they're they're a good team. They're they're really playing hard. They're at the top of the Metropolitan. They're playing good hockey when they get a whole new coach and they well a Stanley Cup winning coach, not just this random how do you do a really good coach and lose JV or lose John Tavares, who just got booed out of the building, which was ridiculous, but. We grabbed three points in the last two games, but giving two to Columbus was a dagger. It seems like every time we have that huge game, we had that one against the Penguins, not the winner, not the stadium series one, but the one previous where it was a big four-point swing. We fell to that one, and then we lose this Columbus one, which was a really big four-point swing as well, and it's... 
seems like there's ones we really need. There's ones we really, really need. We're not getting. And even the stadium series win, which was clearly a big two points, we also allowed the Penguins to grab a point. So we're just not grasping those big ones that we need. Let me know what you think down below on all the topics we discussed. I definitely want to know what you think about that Gabriel hit because that was just a joke to me. Really pathetic. Really pathetic. And it's just when you see Nolan Patrick's back turn to you for that long, you need to have the presence of mind to realize, okay, I'm an NHL player. This guy's showing his back to me. I'm not full force charging at him. That, that's just irresponsible. It's irresponsible, and, and he definitely should get a hearing. And, and the referees did not kick him out. Pisses me off because that let the game get out of hand at times. That let Nolan Patrick respond. That let Gabriel go after Scott Law, and that let it get chippy to an extreme that it probably shouldn't have with, with a team that's that low in the standings and all that. What the hell? What the hell? Why did it even get to that extent? Moral of the story, two points. Big night for some guys. JVR returning to the to the North Jersey. Well, I'm in South Jersey, so everything to me is North. I don't want to get hit with that. Oh, what's Central Jersey? No, everything's North to me. Responding with a big three-point night. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you. I'm sorry for missing yesterday's Columbus game. It is, it is what it is. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.